I'm very uh, happy to welcome in um, Eloise and Andrekini. Andreniki. Andreniki, sorry, <laughs> from the Sticky Institute. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for coming in. So, uh, firstly, I was wondering if you could give us a bit of an idea of what it is that Sticky is and what role you play. Ah, yeah, okay. We're a small shop in the subway underneath Flinders Street Station. Mm-hmm. In that shop, there is a photocopier, mm-hmm. a large table. Mm-hmm. Many textures, yep. a pool of typewriters, mm. and critically, zines. Yes, lots and lots of zines. What is a zine? What is a zine? A zine is a, a special self made publication by an individual or a group that is purely freedom, as I would like to always put it. It is. Yeah. You can say what you want to say. You can draw what you want to draw. It's political. It's social, economical. It's religious. It's artistic. It's it's, it's anti everything. everything. It's pro everything. Exactly. It can be a stick man. <laughs> We've had adventures of stick man before. <laughs> or goblin man. It, yeah, that's right. We have an eight year old, uh, one year anniversary issue of Goblin mm. in the shelves at the moment. Amazing. Yeah, zines are whatever the hell you want yeah. that you can photocopy double-sided. Basically small runs of handmade uh, magazine. Exactly, yeah, without magazine. without the gloss, without the yep. advertising and without any editing. Yeah, or spell check. <laughs> spell check. <laughs> Unless you decided to do it yourself, yep. which most people don't. No. If you're really into spell check, then you probably want to be published. Yeah, <laughs> the same people are the crazy ones. It's it's a place where some people can actually use it as a testing run for their publication. If they if they do we don't want, want those people. if they do want greater big bigger things for their future, I guess we don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sticky Institute is a space where people can make and create their zines, but it's also a retail space. Is that exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, a non-profit retail space. Now, I know, Nicole, you're going to say, but how can such a thing exist in Melbourne? And to that, and dear listeners, I would say <laughs> that we are actually government funded. There's no way anyone who has a business plan where they are selling zines for 50 cents to $5 on tiny print runs <laughs> with a rented space and bills to pay. No, that is not that is not a business model. It's but if you write grant funds and <laughs> tell people, not lying, mind you, that you're an incredible cultural contribution to the city of Melbourne, nay, a distinguishing feature of us as a UNESCO city of literature, mm. then... <laughs> then you're in. Then it's happening until the start of this year when we didn't get any government funding. Oh, no. <laughs> that was and, a bit of a problem. And so we realised that volunteers can't necessarily make it last forever just on zines. That's right. Love, in fact, could not pay the rent. And there is a lot of love around Sticky. Yes. And so a boy came to us and said, you know what, I love this shop. I love the freedom, and what I want to do for you is raise some money. Yeah. Because we know that love does not pay the rent, and you know we'll what? In reality, it never will. We'll call him Little Jimmy, <laughs> but his actual name is Grant. <laughs> Before we move on to the uh, fundraiser event, which I can see you guys veering towards, um, I guess these. Sticky sounds like a very important place for the Melbourne and greater Australian uh, creative communities. Mm. How many people are actually involved with the space in terms of volunteers or people that come along and and use the space themselves? Day to day, we have a core team of about uh, six or so volunteers who actively keep the place open. on the days that we're open, which is Wednesday to Saturday, and we did have to cut our hours this year, uh, we have roughly 110 people visit us on a daily basis and millions of hearts touched by zines. Like every month we get, I don't know, about 150 new zines, I think mm. it works out to be, mm. that people are making 
and getting into the space to circulate further. And we go to zine fairs around Australia, so we are a sort of an important hub for Australian zine culture as much as Melbourne's active, creative community. Do the zines come from across the country or even the world? Yeah, yeah. I think like a, a third of them uh, are international, a third of them are from all over Australia and a third of them are just from within mm. Melbourne. Yep. We do. We did actually get... I know I always bring this up every time somebody asks me, but we did used to get a lot of nice ones from Japan. <laughs> Not anymore. No, no. Well, no, because nobody actually understood what was written inside them because yeah. it was in Japanese. Uh, but they looked cool. They, they were amazing, yeah. They were beautiful yeah. things. Hmm. As long as, it, you know, if it's, if it's visually interesting, well, it can be in any language. Exactly, because it had nice photos of Japan, um, skylines and stuff, and then random photos of food and whatever. You know, those food sculpture things that we see everywhere. <laughs> I like those scenes. They were fun. So what about for the people that can come to Sticky and magazines themselves at the space? Does it cost anything to, to do that? No. Um, the only cost involved is using the photocopier. Everything else we have is yeah. free. Yeah. You can sit down all day, not necessarily produce a, a zine, but sit down all day and just draw. Mm. Excellent. We have typewriters. We have different model typewriters. We're getting a quite quite a good collection. I think we have, what, nine? We've got nine at the moment, <laughs> yep. So Excellent. if you're not happy with the Imperial brand, you yeah. can switch to, to the, the Olivetti or yeah. the Adler if you're not quite happy with exactly. the Olivetti. Sort of they all have standards. different personalities. And people who, have, people who come on a regular basis have chosen their favourites. They know. Yeah. yeah, that's right. They gravitate. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah we have so new tables that um, Eloise purchased from... Uh, a failing book company. Uh, um, uh, yeah, a large book chain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they amazingly decided just at the time that we needed tables to bring the prices of their own tables down. In yeah. fact, they went out of business for Sticky. Exactly. To refurbish. <laughs> Amazing. So we have this large creating space for anybody to come in and create amazing works of literature or art. Sounds amazing. Mm. You guys are having a fundraiser event at uh, the Toffin Town next Sunday. Mm. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about, about this event and who's playing. We're so lucky to have Toffin Town as a venue. What an yeah. awesome venue. It was, it was quickly picked up. It was great Yeah, that they agreed to do it. And we've got Oscar and Martin. Parking Lot Experiments, which is Hand Mirror. Yeah, Parking Lot Experiments are a great band to dance to. They're so energetic. And, you know, if everyone comes on night and brings in the, the positive energy, it's going to be... It's, it's going to be a dance a It's going to be a real celebration because Sticky has had a little bit of help since our financial meltdown debt ceiling, um, where City of Melbourne have stepped in and helped us with some rent assistance and Arts Victoria have come through and given us some amazing emergency funding. So uh, we're hoping at the end of the night to be able to pay for our photocopy lease for this year. Mm. But um, also we're looking for just amazing dancing action. Yes, and celebration to go action. along with the amazing dancing action, the day before... Oh, this is good. We've organised this thing to happen at Sticky between 10, 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock. It's called the Ronson Effect. And it's called the Ronson Effect because in 1987, my parents <laughs> bought me a Ronson crimper machine for Christmas. And funnily enough, I've actually kept it. I with kept the it box, With people. the box, with the instructions, with everything intact and I'll be bringing it in too sticky the night before the event to crimp anybody's hair because you want to look good at this benefit you want to look you want to look the right way you know yeah, you want to you look need crimped a, hair a person with crimped hair means they're out to have fun they're out to give their support to sticky and that's what sticky wants you need style mm. and volume uh, exactly and the Ronson <laughs> yes. gives you both it gives you both and sometimes it gives you even extra volume if you do it right yeah, exactly. It's about <laughs> you gotta, layering. You th exactly, layering and strategy. We've got uh, volunteers with super short hair, Nicole. They are growing their hair for <laughs> this <laughs> event. This is, this is the event that is going to be spoken about yeah. in 20 years' time. I hope this so. This is where people are going to meet future 
life partners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be insane. <laughs> exactly, because it is at the top in town, and you know the top in town has their live venue place, but then next door they have their quiet. Chillax area. Mm. Chillax area, a secluded <laughs> area where you meet you meet your new partner at the live venue place, but then you go next door to get to know each other a little bit better. Oh my god, I haven't even mentioned the incredible zine show bags that we're going to be oh giving to yes, people oh at the door. God. This is nuts. This was this started out as a small additionary Dictionary? It's a new word. <laughs> Small idea that would be like enhancing your experience as if the Ronson effect wasn't enough. Mm. But we've now got pretty much every major zine maker or artist in Melbourne doing limited print runs of just freebie zines for your yeah. show bag at the door that will eventually exactly. become the most coveted. So you'll get a Cougar Flashy zine. A Pat Grant zine. A Pat Grant zine and you'll get... What's that? I'm going to throw one of mine scenes in. You better make one, actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make one. I'll make one. You then you get a ghost patrol. Yeah, yeah. Ghost like... patrols doing a zine for it. I mean, we've, he has. They're beautiful. Uh, so I mean, yeah, this is and look, it's free. It's free. Exactly. It's classified as a show bag of zines, yep. and everyone through the door gets a show bag. Everyone as many limited. as many show bags as can be given out, mm. um, and people can find me during the night to throw any kind of punch-ups or confrontations <laughs> if they feel that they need. Or they feel like they got the wrong show bag if they didn't get a specific scene or but something. But if they're not happy with their hair, they go to Andrew Nicky. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, what, what, what happens if, uh, you know, it's a great turnout mm. and, you know, everyone collects all the show bags. Does that mean Sticky lives on for another year? Definitely. It yep. means our our C three one hundred DocuCenter three photocopier has had its lease paid for that twelve month period. Yeah. Excellent. And just takes the pressure off us as an artist run initiative or small arts organization. And it's it's a really difficult environment. Increasingly so just in the last sort of couple of years where there isn't a lot of annual operational funding for arts organisations in Victoria. A lot of funding has turned to the project-based model or the triennial funding model so that you can either sort of exist from one project to the next, which is very difficult if no one wants to actually pay the rent, which is your annual, you know, problem, or um, you can be lucky enough to get triennial funding, which will set you up for three years, but um, that's something that Sticky has yet to triumph with and in the meantime it's one 12 month lot of funding to the next from various bodies so it's difficult mm. well listeners of, of triple r we should support another community organization sticky institute is holding a fundraiser at the top in town this sunday the 20 next sunday the 21st of august get along to see a bunch of great bands and some zines. And yep. if listeners want to come visit, if they're not familiar with Sticky Institute, where do oh. they go to? Oh, yeah, of course. It's the uh, creepy, dark sort of subway. The underground walkway from DeGrave Street. Yeah. You go down this dark alley. Yeah, it's, it's across... an adventure. You have to earn it. You've got to find us. We're not out there for you. Admittedly, some people who do come and eventually do find the shop have admitted to us that it took them five years to find it. Yeah, that, that's fine. We won't judge. And all Triple R subscribers who show their card on the door, I will give them a kiss. That is a promise. Oh, my God. Eloise will kiss and I'm a good kisser. <laughs> Anyone with a Triple R, current Triple R subscriber's card. Because, of course, it will be at the time of your subscriber-thon. It's true. So we're looking for love both ways. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh-huh. Excellent. Interracial. Thank you very much. We're going to hear a chat from the Parking Lot Experiments who are playing Yay. at the show. Have a lovely night. Thanks, man. Awesome. <laughs> See you all there, everyone. Bye.